Hey, hey, hey. Welcome back to the Josh and Kuzi show. Or if this is the first time here, nice to meet you. Thanks for coming. All right. So we meet, uh, we have these conversations once a week. Um, we just chit chat about, if you're new here, we chit chat about all, all things in our life. And we talk about, we sprinkle in a little real estate stuff and we just try to have a nice casual conversation. We, who do I mean by we? It's my co-host, my partner in crime in some aspects of the business, Mr. Josh Vega, AKA Bobby Millette. And then the one and only Denise Selecki, not anymore, Denise Griffin. So, so say oh. hi to the people, y'all. Wait, wait, did you change the name or it's still happening? Oh, like, we're going into that conversation le today. Legally, legally, it's not changed yet. On the books, it's not changed. Ah, interesting. That's, yeah. a, that's a nice little update. Yeah, because I have to get to the Social Security office. It's a task. Ah, it, it has to be a pain. Like, what is that process like to change your name? Like, It's a pain. Yeah. Which is why I didn't want to change. <laughs> I didn't want to change from my maiden name initially, but my wow. ex was very adamant that you have to take my name. So it's a headache. You got to go to Social Security. Then you got to get a new passport. Then you got to change your license. Then you got to do all your bank accounts, your credit cards, everything. It's a hassle. Oof. Yeah. I, I, I didn't think about all the bank accounts and credit cards. And credit all that. cards. Even utility bills. Everything that has your name on it. You have to change. Oh, yeah, that sucks. <laughs> so you, you have to then, you have to manually, I guess, track down everything that I guess would need to change yourself, right? Yeah. Um, mm, that's interesting. Yeah. It's a, they they, need I to make it, it a one-click thing. Right, like exactly. You change it in one portal and it just <laughs> goes out. There's an app for that. <laughs> right? Yeah, it yeah, needs an, to app. Be an app. For that. Well, there you go. I mean, that, that's a that's a app idea right there. Find find a developer. One click change your it, name. <laughs> what I noticed with you, Denise, lately, I guess since uh, then, you've been a little. You had a little more spark in your uh, in your business and more in your. You know what I mean? You've been doing some more stuff. Pep Has this been step. motivating too? Yeah, a little bit. You think you think so? Is that what you're seeing? You don't see that? <laughs> no, um, I think, I don't think it has anything to do with the name change or whatever, but um, I don't know. Maybe because I'm going to be 40 next month. What, You're not 40 what yet. Is, what is, um. <laughs> not 40 yet, no. <laughs> <laughs> I will be I January. <laughs> I just always assume we were the same age. That's all. You okay. always say that. <laughs> That's just, I guess, you know, I, guess, I don't know. We've known each other for a long time. What were you saying, Josh? Well, talking about like pepping your step and whatnot. Like, what what is December like normally for you guys? Like, because I know there's so many, you know, there's Christmas and it, and it gets slower for most industries. So, like, how do you guys typically deal with December? Is it like a winding down month where you expect mm. it to? No. No, well, you only you have so much time, right? So when you're super slammed, like in this, well, I guess only speak for myself. Um, but when I'm super slammed in the busier months, I don't know, I guess from late February to, I don't know, early October, late September, um, you don't have a lot of stuff, a lot of time to work too much on your business. I mean, you know, it, like your marketing, your, your, your all, all the things that go on and within the business that's not with clients updating your databases, updating your systems, double checking your P's and L's, cutting your, looking at your budgets and all that stuff, uh, updating all that type of stuff. So you always can expect that from, yeah, I want to say about October to October. Mm -hmm. the Super Bowl ish, you have less people calling and, uh, you know, that's a good thing to bring up because I think actually I know a big mistake and I made this mistake my first couple of years in the business is that when the months are high and we just get busy and busy and busy, we just assume that it, that this could continue on and we don't properly budget, um, properly budget. So we go out and we'll, we'll buy this product or this thing or do this and that and our P's and L's look great. And then all of a sudden we still have those expenses that we brought on, like whatever, if say it's um, a Google ad or, you know, Facebook marketing or, or whatever. Or a Lumen, a Lumen, is that what it's a called? Lumen. Or a, a Lumen. Which, a Lumen. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's the thing we blew in last week. Oh right, yeah, yeah. So yeah. you buy you buy lumens and different gadgets that uh, you know. You yeah. do, you do. That's <laughs> well, a business expense. I, have, I do have a rule that I do spend <laughs> I do spend ten percent of my of our money on fun stuff, but that's another conversation. Um, oh, I, like, I like that though. Yeah, it's great. You should everyone, everyone deserves 
Everyone, well, everyone should. Yeah, you should. you should. Everyone should. No matter what it is, 10% goes to you. It can be a vacation. It can be a toy. Whatever. You can go into a, a fun account where, say, if you save up 10 grand, you buy a nice cruise or something. I don't know. Whatever. The point is you should do that. Um, but what, what you, what happens for, especially a lot of newer agents, they will get to these end of these months and then they'll freak out because the calls aren't happening as, as much as they were expecting. And this year, most of these, the newer agents are not properly doing their P's and L's and, and investing in their business wisely. So they're kind of caught off guard and then they're freaking out. And then it doubled down, it doubles down because this is the time of year where people go, they take their foot off the pedal. Right. And they're like, I'm just going to chill for a minute. But in commission sales, especially one with such high ticket items like a house, um, whatever you're doing now, you can't really count. Whatever you're working now, active buyers or listings now, you can't really expect to get paid on those things for 90, 120 days out. So if you take your foot off the pedal and you're not answering the calls or you're not marketing or you're not sending your note cards or whatever, and people say, January 1, I'm going to start. Well, now they're 90 days, four months out. Uh, before they get busy again so it compounds that way and then people freak out and you'll see that it's um uh, yeah you, you walk around an office around january february there are a lot of people almost in tears they have no money <laughs> I, I see it all i see it every year and that and that's because they didn't work hard enough q4 or, or continue to work they kind of went into vacation mode like most regular people i guess well, yeah, I don't know if it's necessarily right? that either, though. I think some of the clients fall back because it's in the holidays. But when the clients fall back, the agents tend to fall back instead of continuing to prospect and make connections. So mm. instead of yeah. falling back, I don't know. I ramp up. Doing... Yeah, you should be ramping. I ramp up. I, I ramp up my marketing because hey, now I have the time to do it. Um, well, exactly. That's what I'm saying. Even when, when the clients start to fall back a little bit, we need to ramp up and touches and reaching out and database and marketing stuff because like if that. you're not denise if you're not and say you and i have the same everyone knows seven eight realtors say if you take your foot off the pedal even though they're thinking of you first but for those these three months i'm on fire sending mailers texting whatever i'm doing shooting ads their way whatever i'm doing all of a sudden i'm top of mind you went mm -hmm. down you know what i mean there are people like hopefully everyone on our team that is marketing through that um you know so that are out there that you have there's you're not the only realtor your friends know yeah well, what, 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 what do you do make sure they're thinking about you what do you do do you i mean do you do any christmas related type marketing like do you switch it up do you do theme based uh stuff around the holidays like oh, we're putting our holiday fun? cards down we're doing the holiday okay, cards perfect. what what do you, it's like happy holidays from koozie and that's the it. team okay that's it handwritten mm -hmm. and people say well same. why do you yeah. Well, we should, you know, events are not a bad play. Um, we haven't been big in events since COVID really. We mm. probably, we keep, we haven't, we probably have to dive into it. Um, but in all reality, I think the better, more productive way of doing things, events are great. Events are great. I think you should do them. But the reason why I like holiday cards and if you do them right and why you do them manually, because some people be like, well, why don't you just, why don't you just have a service do it? And the whole point of it, well, of course you want to, give good greetings out right but you can now manually go and confirm addresses that's what you should be doing you should like oh did they move have you should have the mls up see if they sold recently you should have the tax rolls up making sure that they correspond if they if they were renters this is a great opportunity of like hey i'm gonna send you a, i'm gonna send you a holiday card just then make sure that this is the right address and you'll see if you go down your list there's gonna be a good portion of people moved and then tell you it doesn't mean you should stop hitting them up it just means you need to sure you're top of mind for the next time, you know? So that's, that's why I manually do them. And I also think it doing. gives you a different feel. If you get a car that's printed, right? You know, mm -hmm. you're not the only one that got a printed car. 10, 20, 30 other people did. So when it's handwritten, it's more, it means more, I would think, to the clients when they get it. Yeah. I, I remember when I was working for um, this digital marketing company, we, 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 we found a company that would do handwritten letters because we knew, you know, there was a higher percentage that, you know, it worked, but we weren't going to write them ourselves, you know, cause we're a corporate company, but we found a company that does that. They basically just hand write letters for you. They re yeah. We know about them too, but that's, again, that defeats the purpose for us because we, we were trying to confirm addresses that is, as yeah. we go. Right. Huh. And those people aren't going to do it. I guess you can get a VA to do it. But again, can you really rely? I don't know. Maybe you can. 
Maybe you can. Um, what about you, Josh? You don't, I mean, you don't do any, you don't market, you, you don't do any of that. People just call you, right? Your work yeah, speaks uh, for itself. Well, I, it, a lot of it is referral based. Um, I got the website, so I, I randomly get stuff from the website. I mean, I, I get a lot of stuff from virtuals. I mean, my books are pretty filled most of the times. I, I'm, I'll have like maybe one or two random weeks throughout the year where it'll be like a super empty week, just I don't know, it, close to certain holidays. Like for me, it does start to ramp down, right? So like uh, last two weeks of December start to get super slow. So for me in December, that's when I just start to wind down because I'm always kind of like on full yeah. steam ahead mode. So at least in December, like, it makes sense for me to just, like, wind down a bit, enjoy the holidays, have family over, or whatever, clear my mind a bit, and then kind of go for that, like, January motivation ramping up again mode. January. Well, you know what you could do because it's the colder colder days of in Florida. You can ramp up the iguana business. Those, those iguanas be falling uh, out of those trees, man. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I, I actually just got a call today. I, I got a call for a, a spot in uh, in Margate, uh, the Meadows or something like that, HOA. So I'm going to have to go over there, assess their situation, and then uh, quote them on a price. <laughs> but, yeah, you're right. When, once it starts getting colder, you know, you're going to start seeing um, – well, they're just easier to catch. They just slow down. They're slow moving. So for the people who haven't heard us, for first off, let me explain who Josh is. Josh, <laughs> he does – he does photos and videos for real estate agents. You know, you hear, oh yeah, you can check back. You can check back to some previous episodes if you're so inclined to kind of hear more about him. Why not? What else you got to do? Just binge one. <laughs> listen. And he um, and also so he randomly he was like, you know what? I'm going to catch some iguanas and, you know, make it a thing. <laughs> well, well, hold, hold on. Let, let, let me explain because it's not random. <laughs> so okay. it, 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 it made a lot of sense for me because if, for, for people who don't know, we have like a rampant iguana problem in Florida. Because I even get this from like Floridians. Like I had a friend uh, the other day ask me, they're like, oh, so I mean, what's going on with iguanas? Why, why are they a problem? And like I always have to like remember that I, like most people don't get to see as many communities as I do, right? Because all day, every day, I'm driving from Boynton to Deerfield to Coral Springs, all over the place. So I'm seeing, I've been to mostly every community there is, right? I'm probably seeing more stuff than, than more, uh, most realtors. So I get to see it firsthand, like all these like iguanas that are all over the place, mm -hmm. especially because I'm like, you drive down the turnpike, you see them by bridges, you see them by every single canal. And so we have this huge problem that it's kind of like a lot of people aren't yet aware of. I mean, in Miami, they're aware of it. You know, the city has a $200,000 budget to remove them. But it's, it's ramping up over here and like people aren't paying attention and it's going to get pretty bad pretty quick. And like the problem and why it makes sense for me is because first off, since I'm driving all around the place, I get to see the communities that have the problem. So it's easy for me to just like after a shoot stop by the you know the office and be like yeah. hey here's my card i see you guys got you know issues i and i have my camera out i could even probably just take some shots of them i could be like look i saw like 10 of them in already you know man if you were really smart what you should do is you should catch a bunch in a community and go to another community and let them go <laughs> 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 I'm like did you all know that you had a problem here well, you know that, what? I yeah, that that's kind of an issue. Like that, that's what happens here in Margate. Because in Margate, like there's a few really close niche communities, and like if one has a big problem, then they're all gonna have a big problem, right? Because they're just gonna keep spreading throughout all these communities. So like the the biggest issue is like getting these HOAs to do something about it. Because dealing with like people in HOAs, like I don't know, man, they just like they don't care that much, or like some HOAs just like. I don't know. They don't put any effort into these things or like it just gets, uh, I don't know. It, it gets mixed in between different departments when you try to like pitch him on this service, but it's a big issue. Like it needs, it needs to be dealt with like, because they also mess up the foundation of homes and, and bridges and properties because they tunnel in and do all types of stuff yep. and they eat up all the vegetation. You think about like these crazy communities in Boca that spend like uh, tens of thousands of dollars on like uh you know nice plants and exotics yeah, all over their signs stupid. and all that and then now you look at their signs and you got iguanas standing on their signs shitting on them mm -hmm. and eating all their plants so it's a big issue and so i'm like yeah I, let me let me start this little company see if i get uh some some leads from it, it it's 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 starting. yeah 
<laughs> well, you're, you're, no, well your marketing you... is... Ca- uh, go ahead, Anise. Go, no, go I'm Anise. sorry. This is totally this mess because when you said you were taking photos and you're driving around, I'm picturing yeah. you driving around like just grabbing iguanas and just <laughs> moving on. <laughs> I've, I've kind of done that. That's what I saw that. in my head. No, That's what I saw I, in my head. I've done that. If you, if you see, uh, I, I got a video that I did the other day. I was in a community taking photos and I was like finishing up. I was doing the pool area and then I saw a few iguanas and I just like one of them looked really easy to catch so like as i was like going i, I caught it real quick by the Let tail <laughs> took a little video of it and threw it back in the water <laughs> oh my goodness but what i should do i should just show up to the office with it you know i should just come in shock them with this hey you got a bunch of these <laughs> that that'll make them uh you know take some action but i'll take care of that for you <laughs> yeah, yeah you're <laughs> Your uh, well, your marketing works because speaking of turnpikes and stuff, I was picking up my uh, my dog from the pomp. I was dropping off my dog to the Pompano Pet Lodge. Yeah, is it's a place where you drop off your dogs when you go away. Anyways, I was dropping off one of my dogs there, and I'm behind like two car two cars ahead of me. I see this big sign on this big white van, iguana removal. Oh my god, that's Josh. <laughs> so then I take a picture of it, and then I drive by him. Um, and he he's so in a daze. This dude is rapping a storm, like, and I'm like, dude, like, w- w-, like he doesn't give a shit. Should have been. He's just jamming out. He was just like, <laughs> he was gangster. Like I, I thought he was gonna. Do. <laughs> I, I was. I don't know. He was getting into it. So, anyways, but your marketing is working, and um, I don't know. I thought that was out of all the people in the world that I'm gonna see on the turnpike when I I never get out of my house. I have to see. <laughs> Josh, and he really does. So if you follow his Insta or his TikTok, I think one third of your posts are you just rapping into the camera, right? <laughs> yeah, when I, dude, because I drive so really? much, I get I get so bored, bro. I just like because I, I have the, I have the the camera holster around right around the window frame or whatever, and then like I, I'm driving all day, every day, hours and hours and hours. So I, I'm listening to music. I'm a I'm a big music fanatic, man. Yeah, you're nice to DJ at Brews Room. Uh, I, I used to do some. I, well, I mean, I got the studio here right now. You know, like I, I, I'm very involved in music, so I'm a huge. Fan yeah, what happened with that? Didn't you have like a little, uh, like a studio that you were doing? Yeah, like well, you had like a. What? I had a, I had a independent record label. It was called Sunblaze really? Records. Yeah, wow. so that's why I originally built out this studio here. See, my camera moves over here, so if people could see here, that's the the booth where we used to record. Um, but yeah, we I, I started with a few friends because uh, it was again one of those kind of like sporadic ideas where I had a few friends that had a certain set of skills. I had one guy that he was like, "Oh, I've done music videos for a certain you know guys." I'm like, "Okay, cool. I got a music video guy." I had another one who was going to school to be a lawyer. I'm like, "Okay, I got a contract guy. He can do all the paperwork, etc." And then I had the skill of like engineering music, so I'm like, "All right, we got that." And then I had an, a fourth friend. And he was just good, like, networking. And he was, like, always in the, on the streets and meeting new people. So I'm like, okay, that's, that's like, the, the scout. He's the talent scout. So I'm like, okay, we got four people, each with their own skills, and we can kind of make this work. And we just started, like, hitting up artists and finding a lot of, you know, unknown or underground talent. And it's cra- you know what's crazy is that within, like, a year, we found, like, 15, 20 guys just within like a 10 mile radius from here, like Coral Springs, Margate, Pompano, Coconut Creek, all that, that were like really good. But like the music industry is like, it's so hard to break into. Like you need a lot of money or you either need a lot of networking power. It doesn't matter how much talent you have. Cause like I've found like five guys from Coral Springs that like were really good, but like you're never going to hear from them. And that's because like, when you're that young and you're getting into music, you're, you're 16, 20, 22. That's when, like, you don't really have a lot of money to your name. But that's also the age where, like, you have to make that decision of, like, am I going to pursue a music career yeah. that is, like, very risky? Or am I going to, st- like, bills are piling up. Do I need to start figuring out my life? And so that there's this transition point that if you don't catch them in time, that kind of just, like, withers away. And it's like it, – well, it's like it, athletes too. It's like what are the odds that you are going to, you know, be that professional football player, right? Yes. And, you know, everyone's like, I'm going to play football or I'm going to be a rapper or I'm going to be whatever. And you're like, uh, the odds are slim. I'm not saying that you're not, but you're right. So a lot of people, the chase is dream. I have a – I actually have two clients that 
played semi-pro ball and one still chasing that dream, but now as a coach and the other one, I think he was a minor leagues for the twins for a while and he chased that for a while. And uh, I'm not sure what he's doing now. He was doing like muscle therapy, but these guys, maybe think about it. They, you're right. They put their lives on essentially hold while they're doing that. Right. And yeah. all betting on that. And some people, and they see the success stories. It's very similar to real estate, right? You know, they see the success stories, but not seeing all the people. The who, mm. they don't well, see the the, yeah. Well, if you're not drafted out of high school, how do you, like you said, they were pursuing this. How did you pursue that? Like, what are the, what are the, the well, for, for, if you're in you sports, if you're in sports, I mean, you got up till college, right? Where you're playing for, you know, your, your school. But after that, it's like, that's it. You know what I mean? Like, if you don't get picked up by high school or college, especially in a sport, then you're kind of donezo. <laughs> yeah, well, my, so that my buddy went to the K still, They went where? No, I'm so sorry. My buddy, my buddy, was playing football. He went to um, the Canadian Football League. He got in there for a bit. Oh, and sometimes yeah. you could, like Doug Flew. Oh, yeah. Remember that guy? Yeah. Well, that's the thing. If if you can't make it, because the, the competition in in the, in the states is so hard, and and there's such a limited pool of people that are going to make it, the other option is to go to another country. And of you know, there's less talent sometimes in other countries, and so it's a lot easier for you to stand out. Right. Mm -hmm. So that even happens in, in the music industry. Like I, I've, I've heard of guys that, you know, they go to like China, you know, and then like they become like super celebrities in China wow. because China has its own like rap culture that imitates us. Right. So like they China is like very like still like like uh, surprised by like just seeing like a darker person or a tall person. Right. You get that a lot still. Like mm -hmm. I, I was just watching a video on how like it's very easy to become a model in Asian countries if you're just like american looking because like there, there's just not a lot of them so it's easy for you to get into commercials and acting gigs etc so yeah if, if you can't do it here in the states that's probably your final option to just go some other country and and, and try to make it there but it's tough it's, it's one of those things where yeah it's like it's a young man's game because mm. of the fact of how life works where it's like now when bills are kicking in you kind of have to leave those passion projects behind because when life gotta, happens, because life yeah, happens. True. Exactly. And, and there are the ones that take the risk, you know, and some of them make it, but it's such a small minority of people, you know, like think about like the radio right now, like, you know, there's probably like 20, 30 people you can name off the top of your head as like artists on rotation out of how many billions of people, right? That's true. It's a it's a tiny number, you know. What I mean, like, go on the radio, li listen to it for a whole day. You won't hear more than 30, 40 artists. Yeah, I know you're right. Same so, one over and yeah, over. That's the reality. Same one. There's a couple things I wanted. To, you mentioned that you know you got to go overseas, and I remember reading a story about I think it was Dwight Howard. Uh, I'm kind of looking up now. Went to over to Taiwan. Yeah, it was he, Dwight Howard. You remember him? He was like a major basketball player, and he went over to Taiwan. And, you know, because he was, wasn't doing as well as he wanted to hear. And now he's, like, owning those those guys. So he just went to another country that would go there. I don't know yep. what's He's over there now? Him. Yeah. Um, yeah. So sometimes, you know, there's options in other places. You hear that in baseball, too. They go to South Korea and all that stuff. And uh, it's crazy. But to go back on to what you were saying, so I always – talk about stern because you know the guy's great but he interviewed uh bruce springsteen and i said this in our team team meeting i don't recall if you're on it denise or not but when i was working out and listening to the interview with bruce springsteen and bruce springsteen was in the rock and roll hall of fame and you look right and you look left he had mick jagger on one side and some other famous rocker or whatever on the other side and he was just like holy shit like i can't believe it this little guy me you know, made it because you got to stay. He was saying how in the seventies, every kid wanted to be a rock star. That was the mm -hmm. thing. Right. Mm -hmm. And, um, and then, so, and then what happened is then maybe some of them will get local gigs and then some of them will get to play it at like, at like, I don't know, some ceremony. And then some of them will get whatever to play open for somebody else. And some, and he kept on saying some of them, some of them, some of them, some of them, and only a handful were sitting in this room out of millions upon millions of people 
and was saying, well, what it boiled down to, Howard asked him, was like, well, what it boiled down to is like, well, basically I was living in a, uh, a surf, a surf factory, like a surfboard factory. Mm -hmm. And what I would do was this is what it takes, right? He said, what I would do was I would play record, you know, records. And I think they were called 45s and he'll play it on like 30 or something. He'll slow it down. And you go other other rock stars or play uh, the guitar and piano and listen to every note. And he'll practice the notes slowly. Bing, bing, a guitar, bing, whatever, until he mastered a song. And then he mastered another. And then he mastered another. And eventually he started being able to create his own songs. But that's what it takes, right? Mm. It takes that it takes that day in day out and day in. So what I was telling the team, cause a lot of the, uh, there's a couple of people on our team are newer to the industry and they just want instant success. And I'm like, no, it takes day out, day in, day out, day of what, what we call the daily HBC. You need a daily HBC. You need to do this every single day. And that goes with basketball, right? I mean, look at, um, uh, what's his name? Steph Curry. He's not the biggest guy in the world, but he's like the best player. Because that dude just the work, same with Kobe Bryant. The the work ethic is unparalleled. Michael Jordan, I think he got cut from um, JV in high school or was a varsity. Yeah. He was cut. Yeah, and he was that was and then he was like, nope. And I remember he would just nonstop. He would practice, dribble this, this type of shot, this shot, this move, this move, until he perfected it. And, and I think people just want this instant success, and not everyone has the the drive to keep their head down when everything is not working out and focus on the goal everyone's so everyone everyone so is so focused on the goal but they don't want to take the journey to get there yeah. you see though not... you, you see the end results like when you see people right? when you see people doing what you want to do you don't see the process you just see where yeah. they're at so i think you know it's like what yeah. you say chris about sharing people want to know you people want to see you people want to you know be able to relate to you but I think that piece of it is important because not only do you get to understand that person on a more intimate level, but you see their process of becoming who they are and where they are in their business or life yeah. or whatever. And that's the, that's the most important piece. Um, and who was it? What's the guy, uh, the motivational speaker? Tony Robbins. No, nope, the black guy. The black guy. Oh, I know his name. Someone recommended him to me. I know you're talking about because he's the only black motivational speaker I've ever heard of. Let's just Google black <laughs> motivational speaker. But anyway, he speaker. says his focus is on the journey. You know, he doesn't, he's not worried about the end result. So the, end, the results will come as long as Eric Thomas. Wait. Yes. Yes. Eric Thomas. Yeah. I heard Eric his Thomas. name come up before. Yeah, I heard his name come up before. I forgot who was, was talking about Eric Thomas. And then I listened to one or two things. And yeah, yeah, yeah. He's very inspirational. I'll say that. No, he does a good job. I like it. Um, no, you're right. It is the journey. And I subcon. It's funny. So tomorrow for Keller Williams, I'm teaching to. I they said it was national Keller Williams. I didn't realize it was so big. I, maybe I should have prepped more. But I'm teaching about podcasting and YouTube tomorrow for an hour. And when I was prepping with the guy who's who's going to be uh, hosting it, he was like, well, this guy says it's this, this. Uh, I said, I think, because there's other guys talking about the same subject. I th I'm like, I think they're all wrong. I think it's the journey. Because one guy wants to do interviews. I'm like, okay, whatever. We heard that a million times. One guy wants to do talking head stuff. They're just always talking about the market. I'm like, yeah, yeah, people get bored of that. And he's like, well, what are you going to do? I'm like, we're just bullshit. Like, well, you and I are bullshit now. We're, and, and that brings so what you hear me talking about now and what happened in my life and Denise the same about her changing her name in a divorce. If we're doing this in three years, we're going to have totally different conversations and people are going to be following along on that journey. And that's what people are attracted to, you know. Well, the, well, first off, the people who are attracted to that are going to be your people, right? They're going to be connected to you. And the people who don't like who you are are going to be repelled, which is great too. So, anyways, yes. Well, anyways, what I was going back to, what I meant to say was, I, I never really thought of it as a journey. It was funny. You know, I was talking to the guy today, like when I, 10 years ago, 11 years ago, I don't know if I said this on a podcast before, but it did just stop me. But I was, I, I didn't want to do what they told me to do. I'm gonna be real about it. They wanted me to cold call, door knock, expired for sale by owners. And I rather drown in my own vomit than do any of that. <laughs> so I, I was like, no, I don't know why I should be coming from a needy standpoint point right why should i need the client i want the client to need me 
And I'm like, well, how can I get my message out there to them in a very organized, systematic way that's not from a needy standpoint? I'm like, I know what. I'm just going to tell my story. I'm just going to connect with them. I'm just going to relate to them. And then while I'm building relationships with them, I'm also going to learn the business. So subconsciously, I was out of, I guess, fear of cold calling or being a needy salesperson. I was just documenting my journey. And it's funny how now he's like, oh, that's a good point. Like now we have the opportunity of podcasting and YouTube where we didn't have it before, where you couldn't just, we know we spoke about this briefly last, I think. I think we did last week where you did have a, or maybe it was in my training where you didn't have the opportunity to uh, just get on a microphone and have people hear you or shoot a video of you and have, and create a channel where people could follow you. That didn't exist. And now it does. So why wouldn't you document what people want to know? They don't care that you're a realtor over and over and over again. They want to know about you, your kids, what your interests are. You know, how you talk, how you communicate. They want to know that. Oh, by the way, he's also a realtor. Like if my buddy, if let's say I listen to an interesting podcast, my buddy sold, I don't know, he sold cell phone cases, right? And he did a whole podcast and he was, it had a YouTube channel. It was all about his family and all this different stuff. And always be like, you know, you know trying to drip in his business here and there. I'm like, oh, John has three kids. He loves going to whatever, the movies and bowling, whatever. Oh, yeah, and by the way, he sells iPhone cases. So next time I need one, I'll, I'll think of him. Do you see what I mean? I don't know. I just right. see that as super important. And Denise, you hit it on the head. Like, this is why. I guess, you know what? Let's, go, let's just say how it is. <laughs> you were change your name, and I'm trying to get this woman for the life of me to tell everyone about it. I even created the post. The and I have it. I same And it. everything. Well, it doesn't do anything good in your phone. I, I'm going so, to post it. when? <laughs> When's the deadline? When? Can you do it right now? It's nighttime. You told me not to post that night. I need to post. I never said that. Um... I never said that. I, 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 One a.m. is not good. Eight thirty is fine. People are still scrolling. They're probably either laying in bed or they're sitting at a bar or they're watching TV and they're scrolling right now. Oh, that 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 gives me a, a, a interesting question for you guys, being realtors. When when do you guys? find the time to scroll through to like kind of just consume other content because i know you have your routines right where you're not, and not every realtor is the same but i know like specifically you, you chris like you time block you have certain times that you do certain things but what's like a common time i guess where like you have a little bit extra time to consume some extra content is it is it during lunch do, do most realtors are, are you guys taking lunches at the same time is does it all vary depending on you know what real estate uh, brokerage you're in or does it depend on an individual realtor because like i'm asking for the sake of like if i were to market to realtors for my services right or if i'm going to post something on social media or youtube that i want to see a realtor or did I want a realtor to see? So as far as times go, better in the evening or better in sometime in the day? I, for me, when I when I scroll the most, like for Jen, another agent on our team, I see that she gets up at four twenty, right? I was looking at Oof. her, I was looking at her um, her task Too list early. schedule, whatever. Four twenty. I'm like, damn, I can't get up that early, but I am up that early scrolling. What? So I'll be in my bed and I'm like, I am going to sleep time. further. Exactly. I just need to get up. Or just like last up. night, I was up at two o'clock in the morning, just laying in bed. And then I'm like, oh, let me see what's going on. And then Two I'll... in the morning, but then you're up at four as well. And you can get two hours of sleep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so this is, this is, this is, this is proof that Denise does not listen to my trainings or coaching. <laughs> because, <laughs> because I am the extreme opposite. Like I'm literally looking at my daily schedule here. And I, I think I've mentioned this before. It's very regimented, right? So it's like, it's time blocked in, in by hours. And on the right hand side, I have a plan of what I plan on doing that day. And then I fill in what I actually did. And I stay very organized that way. So when it comes to scrolling, scrolling, I don't have that time block scrolling, right? So, but I do have, okay, there's another part. So this thing called a task list that I have, which is a list of tasks that I can do to, you know, one of them is connect on social media with what I call my dream 300. And um, so when I'm in, inside of Facebook, and Instagram, I have my 300 people, well, mine's closer to 500 people that I truly, truly want to connect with. 
and in an organ. Oh, where is it? Here's the sheet here. Yeah, it's always right here. Was this today? This might have been today's. And then mm -hmm. it's just a sheet of people where you see FB. That means I connected with them on Facebook that particular day. And I remember I had to go back to them on Instagram the next time. But I only focused on those people. Like, because I, I notice if a and the scrolling is just it's just a mind waste. And two, it's depressing because you're you're going to find people with opposing viewpoints, or you're going, you know what I mean? Or you're gonna see other people that you know thoroughly don't admire too much maybe boasting how well they're doing you're going to see things that you really why are you why are you inviting people in your world that you did enhance let yourself to be a part well, of your life well let, let me let me reiterate so versus just scrolling right let's let, let's pre let's pretend it's not just like tiktok scrolling time to consume some sort of outside content that's not like real estate oh related. so oh mm. uh, shit um, because and, and, and this is why I asked this is why I asked too because I think and, and especially for what you want to do as far as like you you want to have people follow you and about your life and yeah. you want to introduce interesting things outside of real estate right so mm -hmm. then in a sense you also have to get more cultured meaning like you need to consume yeah, that's a struggle right that there's like a balance there that you have to meet because like you have to do things you have to learn about new things outside of real estate so that you're doing new and interesting things and talking about different subjects right so you, it i think there might be an importance in time blocking some of that where you're consuming other types well of isn't that where we get that from our books our pad our um audio books because of, like i don't do social media for that i guess i should but I, uh, I'm, it, I, read I guess a lot. it depends. It, yeah, it, look, I so I, I'll tell you what. I tell you what. Like it, like social media. It, you know, there's its pros and cons, right? Because of course you can you can scroll on TikTok and then there's just someone dancing or someone doing a comedy skit. But if you follow the right people, it, it's just a, a way to see video content from someone that you follow, right? So it, it's just a, a different medium. So I follow a lot of guys on there on TikTok where like they're educating me about something like it, it's but it's in a smaller tidbit you know it's within a minute hey guys did you know that you could do this with this blah 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 and it, they explain it within a minute or hey guys there's a new discovery that nasa made blah 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 and then within a minute right so then if i want to consume a longer version of that then i'll go on youtube or a different platform but i i think when we say social media you know we always think of like oh it's just frivolous content but there's there's good stuff on there it just depends on on who you follow and that's why that's what i mean it's like whether you consume it through social or books or podcasts or a tv or a documentary it you still need that time right you need to still yeah block can, it out I'll, well i answer your question so when i work out i'm i, I listen to stern and I, I i'm i'm a huge fan and he covers he pretty much fills my whole world with that stuff mm. <laughs> because they have a team. I, by the way, I'm very jealous. We need a team. They have 75 people that mm. works in their back offices curating content. So they're, they're constantly finding stuff that you don't find anywhere else. For example, today they were on TikTok finding conspiracy theories on TikTok and these like really odd off the wall things that people are talking about. And I'm like, I'm fascinated with that. <laughs> and I'm like, I want to talk about that on my show. <laughs> One's very gross. I don't think it's appropriate, but honestly, I, that during that hour I have stern on and I learned that. And then when I walk my dog after the, actually every night, like after this, I walk all three of my dogs separately, take about an hour. I hear another hour of that. And that's other. And then I come back yeah. and I finish my task list. And then I read until I go to bed. I, I don't know. I just, I wish I had the time to do that. You are king, like, you are king content because you're always, <laughs> always, always. Like, when I get a text from Josh, he's always sending me, I know it's going to be something that I should watch and I want to because it's going to make me laugh or think. Um, <laughs> by the way, one thing you did send me was about uh, that I like, I love Vox, V O X. Vox is yeah. great. And you sent me a short about, and I've seen the, I've seen the longer version of that video, I believe, either with them or someone else. And it was talking about poor neighborhoods and affluent neighborhoods and comparing uh, the heat index and why. And it's oh, that one was interesting. 
Yeah. Can you yeah. put it in our group chat, please, so I can get some info? Okay, so yeah, Denise, Denise wants some info too. So I'll I'll be and and this is what you, you're describing with Stern. You're you're describing uh, an aggregator, like because I follow a few guys like this. You know, whether it be a podcast host, and and it depends on the style of show, right? So whether it be a YouTube channel, there's certain guys that they aggregate content things that are happening yep. and then they break it down into easily consumable content right so whether it be on a podcast or a youtube show or like a short tiktok it, there's there's guys that do that and so when you don't have the time that's what you got to find you got to find a guy that aggregates the content for you and then consume it that way versus you spending all the time consuming content but um yeah that that one was interesting because so it, it denise so I, I sent him a video and basically was talking about that basically comparing or, or trying to figure out why poorer neighborhoods are hotter than richer neighborhoods. So could could you thing. could you guess to any reason why? Not far from each other, same state. I had something really like stupid I was gonna say. I'm not <laughs> <laughs> why is, why so, the temperature is actually hotter. It's hotter in poorer neighborhoods. So it, it basically it's because of trees. So. Like it, they found it like richer neighborhoods have a lot more tree coverage and they uh, they cool down the area a lot more and you know have different in a environmental projects. We got effects. buildings and buildings and or like the soil isn't good enough to grow trees wow. ex- or people don't have time to take care of their gardens, etc. So yeah. like very cool but weird. It, it's it's interesting that someone even look into that. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, com- and compare that, but that's. That's a weird thing that's, to, to But know. that's Vox. V-O-X is one I, – I before, if you're going to say what I consume for content-wise, Vox is definitely – V-O-X is definitely so one of them. So what is Vox? It's, Vox is oh, like it's a, so good. They're, they remind me of like uh, – kind of like Vice, but a um, little bit more friendly uh, to commercial content, I guess. Like Vice goes deep into weird stuff. Um, Vox is, I, I guess they, I don't know. It's like, it's almost like a young, young man's, uh, news is, channel. Is there an app? Uh, VOX. Yeah. Oh, Vox, an app. I don't know. I just, if you Google Vox YouTube. media. Yeah. Oh, you're going to so, go down a rabbit hole, girl. watching those videos. You they're follow so them good. on what? On, they're on IG? Well, they're they're like a huge media. Well, you can follow them on pretty much any social media platform. But then, not only are they like a huge media company, they also you know host or create some of their own podcast shows with different hosts, um, like Scott Galloway. He's he's on the Vox Network. Is it this one? Yeah, Vox Media. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, with the V. Yeah, so Vox is good. I like Vice as well. Um, it's just uh, it, they they have like kind of cool twist to stories, or sometimes they just talk about little intriguing things, like like what we were just discussing. And then Vice, yeah, so follow Vice. I'll say Vox and Mark Rober are probably my two. If I'm going to consume content other than listening to Stern while I'm working out, um, I do like Philip. the daily, huh? Well, I was gonna say Philip DeFranco is good too, Mark Rober, and also Philip DeFranco. He does. He's Who's like one of those guys that like aggregates content. It's more like, mm, uh, how would I describe it? It's more like pop culture, right? But it's a quick, easy way to like stay up to date on like what's happening, like talking about like what the fuck Kanye is doing and shit, which also <laughs> is a, a huge mess. <laughs> You know what? You know, I was thinking about this, right? Because you know, he just he posted a swastika on Twitter, and then he was on that Alex Jones guy's doing white supremacy stuff, and I'm like a black dude doing white supremacy, right? It, so I think he's either brilliant where he's trolling these guys, right? He's trolling them to out them, or absolutely he, insane, <laughs> or or he's doing a business move for attention, or he's insane. But think about it. So, oh, this is so this kind of ties together. So, remember, I was telling you about a couple weeks ago about this Fuentes guy who was a podcaster who, Nick okay, Fuentes. the January 6th, yeah, that guy. Yeah. Well, this is before his name was floating around. So, all these January 6th people, when they go to court, they say, well, they listen to Alex Jones and Nick Fuentes and they listen to, like, you know, besides Trump, like those guys. And, mm-hmm. um, and they were just, 
believing the cool the drinking the Kool Aid of the crackers. If you believe that, it's just silly. But anyways, so they were. Um, <laughs> Sorry, we're just. They're not my dream. Eh, they're not my dream three hundred. So. <laughs> Um, they're like, you know, you know, we believe that we are changed people. Sorry. We were indoctrinated, but anyways, so like two days later, we find out that Kanye and this Nick Fuentes guy goes and meets Trump. Right. Mm -hmm. And first off, Fuentes is, has a Spanish last name, but he's a white supremacist and he's having dinner with a black guy. Go get that one. And, <laughs> but they were saying that, um, yeah, right. Only in America. Right. <laughs> but they were saying that, um, that, after the fact, I don't know if you read this story, and I don't know if they put this out ever out after the fact to kind of control damage control, but that Nick Fuentes was so angry at Trump because Trump uh, stopped paying attention to his base, including Nick Fuentes, and gave him attention. And um, Kanye was really upset with Trump because Kanye was in his office like whatever a couple years ago, and then he said that Trump kind of just blew him off, blew him off, or whatever the details. I don't well, have the exact. He wanted details, him anyways. to be his VP. <laughs> well, that's Kanye. now. Yeah. yeah. So Nick Fuentes and, and Kanye West, Kanye West, and in, was invited to meet with Trump. Like mm -hmm. they were going to have a lunch, and then Kanye West didn't tell Trump and invited Nick Fuentes and brought him. And, brought him. <laughs> and yeah. Kanye said that it was all to throw Trump under the bus for him not being loyal back to the people who are loyal to him. I don't know how true that is, because I don't know how true. That, but if it is, it's brilliant. But if it was really true, why would they, why would they? But why would if it was really true and that was their plan, why would they out their own plan later? Like, yeah, you know? Kanye is an interesting one, man, because ah, it, it, in in certain aspects you could tell when he does some some pretty ingenious, but I think he's just like it, he's it's getting it. bad. Like on Twitter the other day, he posted. Uh, and I think he's banned again because he got banned like very recently, he got unbanned. And then he posted mm -hmm. that he had sex with Taylor Swift. And then he posted, uh, what was the other thing that he posted that was crazy? Oh, there, there's a new show on Netflix with, um, uh, it's like a spinoff of the Addams Family. And so that main uh -huh. actress, she, he said that, I forget her name, but oh, Jenna Ortega or something like that. He said Jenna Ortega doesn't like black people. So those were his two t tweets when he got unbanned. He was like, I had sex with Taylor Swift yeah. and Jenna Ortega doesn't like black people. And then now I think he's banned off with Twitter again. So, you know, he did that with George what is Bush, that? What is he? The, well, yeah, he, he said that. He said that. That was his whole controversy, right? When when he went yeah. on um, whatever news show it was and he was with the um, – What was that? Comedian? Saturday Night Live guy, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The guy who did the Austin Powers. Um, I forget his name. But then he was like, yeah, George Bush doesn't like black people. And, like, that was his whole big thing, and he got a lot of heat and went viral for it. But I think he's losing it. And I don't know if you've ever seen the recent documentary that came out with him uh, on Netflix. Really, really good because it covers, like, all this early Kanye where it's a lot of stuff that no one has ever seen. And it's and this documentary took about 20 years to, to finish because it was 20 years worth of footage that was just unreleased to the public. They finally put it together and you could see the genius of him when it comes to music. And then towards the end, you could see that, okay, he's actually diagnosed as a bipolar. You see him interacting with people and like, it's really weird. Like he starts losing it. And so I think he's going down this weird almost like a Britney Spears, you know, path where this fame gets to you. Like you start getting, uh, you know, all the paparazzis, you start getting like the, the social media backlash. And we got we to gotta remember, like, this is fairly new to deal with. Like all this social, like this, the world of like social media where like you can see millions of people just commenting hateful shit at you. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. it, as you were talking earlier, like, we didn't have the ability to now create access and give people uh, access to our lives, but there's a there's a big con to that, you know. When now, if you read the comments, you could also see all these people just talking shit for no reason or trolling, and if you yeah. decide to hard. read all that stuff, yeah, right. For people to so mentally, yeah, it's like it's how do you process with. that? Yeah, because mm -hmm. like you you're not as a human being, you're not really meant to do. You have like a a a, a circle of friends that you deal with. But you don't have access to the world, and the world doesn't get you to tell you off every single day. Every day, and, right? So, and and all 
all these people spinning, you know, what you say, taking clips from you on a podcast and taking it out of context or reacting yeah. in an over dramatic way. And it has to be insane to deal with. So who knows, man? I think I think he's he's losing it, man. Like he, he's I, losing I, it. Well, yeah. Well, he started losing it in 05 with the Bush thing. He said George Bush doesn't care about black people. But then last week he says, I see good things about Hitler. Go get yeah. like. You're like, what? <laughs> you, you realize if Hitler were standing, you, you realize if Hitler were standing right next to you, Kanye, he would have shot you, like, yeah, because you're yeah. not a white yeah. guy. Like, do you realize what? But so, yeah, so he's losing it. But it was amazing. His first two albums are probably one of the definitely in my top twenty hip hop yeah. albums I've College ever dropout. heard. College Yeah, perfect the album. Dropout, and, oh, shit, what was the second one? Um, and he's, he did through the wire when he wrapped through the wire through his his uh, oh, his wire jaw. Yeah, well, that that's what I mean. Like, I if mean, you watch that documentary and you watch all genius. that happen to him, it's it's it, yeah, it's incredible. But a musical genius. And yes. someone was someone was talking about this the other day. They're like they're like Kanye, you know, is getting wrapped up on the fact that he's a musical genius and not realizing that he's not uh, a genius when it comes to his Anything concepts. <laughs> well, well, yeah, like, like he, 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 he's like, all right, well, I'm a genius in, in this aspect or category, so I'm a genius overall, right? Like, I can take these concepts and, and, and put them in words and put them out into public, and they're going to receive it how I want them to receive it. But, like, it's not true. Like, it's just you're, you're a genius in, in one aspect of your life, not all of it. Right. So and that's normally how it is with gifted people. Yeah. And that's it's not across the board. Stay in your lane. Stay in your exactly. Lane. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> but isn't the human brain so fascinating how like mm -hmm. it could be. So we study this in negotiations a lot. We're in a negotiation. We're talking about the human brain. We we essentially have dog brains yeah. that um, we're, we control every the, just three parts of our brains that control our, our decision making and two of them i think i said this before two of them are in the part of your brain that's simply like not too evolved it's the basis of human brains like chimpanzee brains or on the emotional side of things so we make our decisions out of emotion and we back it up with logic um but anyways the thing is the the brain is just fascinating because kanye can sit here and make music like this and i don't even know where to begin but he can't put together two sentences without yelling at something crazy, right? Mm -hmm. Like something is something is not firing right or firing differently. Yeah, you know? it, it. But you know what? It, and and to bring it back to like when I had the, the the record label, I would encounter some guys, super, and I remember them like like this is guy we call his name was Bugatti Slim, super street guy, very like gangster, like kind of scary. And he he would write these like metaphors that were like incredible. Like when I'm listening to him, it, it was like a different person when he would go in the booth. Right. So when you talk to him, it's like, all right, you're a certain way. But then he would go yeah. in and make music. And it was like a completely, totally different person. And like the metaphors that would, he would put together were very smart. But then like I, I, I got a glimpse of like one of his papers one day as like he was writing because he would he would he wouldn't use like a, a phone or anything he would like write on pen and uh with a, with a pencil on paper and like i mean like and, and not to diss him but like could barely spell right like very chicken scratch like very like like elementary right but at the same time putting very complex concepts together when it when it came to music you know what i mean so like so it makes you wonder if his background or his environment now was conducive of that of creating that i guess that genius if you will or if then it makes you wonder this is how fragile are we are if it was in a quote-unquote i guess better environment right where he i guess didn't write tr chicken scratches maybe educated differently mm -hmm. would it excel that or would it you know what i mean like what yeah it's so it's impossible to know. It's like taking a multivitamin, right? Like you take multivitamins, you don't know if it did anything because it wasn't like there's two of you. One took it, one didn't, right? Right. It's the same thing. Yeah. I don't know why I got that analogy. But I think he, I think if you, I think if you put him in a different environment, he would excel if he's supported in the right way. And that's yeah. The, well, well, that's the tricky part, and, and and that's that's the thing with Kanye. It's like th that environment for anyone is insane. So like, I don't I don't think that you know like. 
but mental issues and learning environments i think are are different yeah yeah because right? yeah. if i have a mental imbalance but, or whatever it doesn't really i can be better but my, the disability is still there a learning environment right. i think is different well it, the here, here's a curious thing about the kind uh -huh. of thing like he and and again this goes into like conspiracy but this is what he says now right so and he made an example of this. He actually actually showed a text string about this because what he was saying is that, like, the people around him, um, because he's such an asset, right? So, like, they basically are medicating him. And this kind of goes back into, like, the Britney Spears thing. So I don't know how much you guys know about Britney because, like, she started kind of going insane. And she would post, like, I mean, she still does, like, post, like, basically nude pictures on Instagram and does kind of weird, crazy things. No, but, like, nude. Like, she does. That's everybody. She's, like, no everybody. clothes, no clothes, but just, like, censoring, you know, like, the, the parts. So she does very weird things. It's not. It's definitely not the same Britney. And, and her thing was that, you know, they were kind of medicating her. And then Kanye is claiming the same, where, like, the people around him are, are medicating her him purposely and then he would show a text thread of like his actual um his trainer and he he was showing how his trainer was like hey man uh we need to kind of get together and talk and we can have a nice meeting or you know we can kind of put you back on your medication and then we're gonna send you to happy town and you know mm -hmm. it's gonna be like that from now on so it's hard to say what's the problem is like it's hard to say what's true what isn't you know, how real it is, how out of context some of these things are. There are similar stories in the music industry of things like this happening because, again, you become an asset, right? You're a money-making machine, and then at some point you need to get controlled. And that goes back to, like, the Elvis thing, too. I don't know if you guys saw, saw like, the recent Elvis documentary or read up on, like, Elvis's story, but, you know, that was the downfall of Elvis where – you know, his manager was basically taking advantage of him for almost 50 years and kind of just like feeding him and, and uh, giving him drugs, et cetera. And like oh, it just wow. created this downfall of, of Elvis where he turned fat and unhealthy and eventually passed away. And his manager basically took all his money, robbed him. So who's to say, you know, I always like leave it up in the air a bit, but it doesn't mean that I excuse like what Kanye is saying or the fact that he's still saying what he's saying. It's just one of those scenarios where like, yeah, you, you're done. Like you, <laughs> like. Well, the more important question is why are people texting Kanye? Because he does this all the time. He screenshots his text, like he did it with he did <laughs> yes. it with John Legend, remember? And yeah, he did it with that. Uh, scared texting who's that Kanye. dude? <laughs> who's that dude that always goes at Eminem and Eminem Ritz? But the uh, the Charlemagne dude, that guy. Oh, Charlemagne. He oh. did it with him. Yeah, you know he did it with him. He's well, he's um, like burning he, he, all his bridges. <laughs> why would you text a guy who has a habit of screenshotting his text? Like, yeah. why would you do that? And, and honestly, look, like it, that's why I don't think it, it's like a genius play because like he is burning every single bridge. Like he he he's not only like burning like the corporate bridges and Adidas the and Mark all the Mans, those, those yeah. deals, but he's burning like the bridges between friends and people who are like like he, he was coming at Shaq the other day he came at dave Chappelle, you know like well that's he, not he's good. Come, right that's, that's, <laughs> gonna be that's, whole, I, that's gonna be a whole special yeah. <laughs> it, it, dude it, and 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 it was funny is like dave Chappelle, like one of his best skits was the the black races right where he he was oh, yeah, like the this southern guy, black yeah. race yeah, yeah it was like the, oh, the dude, world's only black races and then now Kanye is a black racist and he's coming at Dave Chappelle. It's just like Denise, we live in this weird game? world. <laughs> I think I thought a while ago. Dude, oh, it's, it's a lot the Ch Chappelle show. Yeah, he was you a can blind, watch it on YouTube. He was a he was a black dude. I think he was adopted to a racist family, but he was blind. And they yeah. covered him in the sheets so no one would know he was black. And then he ended up being the leader of the Ku Klux Klan. And he was so he was a blind black dude being the leader of Ku Klux Klan, and no one knew he was black. And his family like kept the sheets on him. I could have that slightly off, but it's something like that. And it's <laughs> oh my god, it's hilarious. Um, I, I forget the the name of the character he plays. Something Gibsy or something like that. I gotta look it up because yeah, the, the news. Dave Bell is he's he's a genius. Like if I'm gonna watch any comedy things, oh. I can't watch. I can only watch three. I can only watch Daniel Tosh, Dave Chappelle, and uh, uh, Chris Rock. 
and that's it. I can't, I can't, I can't do anyone else. They just bore me. I don't know. <laughs> there's, there's a few, there's a few good guys out there, but I think Dave Chappelle. My girl asked me that the other day. She was like, "Who's who's the goat for you when it comes to comedy?" And I think, oh, Chappelle, Dave Chappelle. And, and you know what? It's not even because, and he doesn't give me the most laughs, but he's the most thought provoking. Like he he like yes. when I listen to him, like and the way he crafts stories, and like the the patience that he has on stage, and like the confidence, it's it's like masterful. And like he is yeah. definitely the goat. He's very good. So. Not to keep going back to Stern, but he does the same thing that Stern does. He he will craft a whole thing and have references throughout, and then you'll think those references or those parts of the stories are gone, and then he'll tell a mm. new joke with a punchline went back to the first joke that he told of yeah. the night. And Stern does that all day long on his show, which is yeah. brilliant. But anyways, but so he does that every day. But Chappelle is like, I literally so it was funny. Like, I, okay, so my buddy Justin tried to do like a stand up mic, and he posted on. Facebook. And I was going back and forth. He said, Chris, you should do it. You can say some funny shit sometimes. And I was like, you know, maybe I, maybe I should try it. Right. <laughs> and then, and then I watched the Chappelle thing mm. and I literally go, I am never going to be a stand up comedian. <laughs> 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 you know? I, how do you, how do you even go on stage after watching that? You yeah. can't. That's an art. Yeah. Yeah. So, there, question. There, there, go yeah, ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. No, no, because no, I'm going off topic. So you can go ahead. No, I was I was just gonna comment that that like some people sometimes motivate you, you know, with how great they are, and sometimes it does the opposite effect. With how great someone is, it will just demotivate you completely because like, yeah, you're just like, that. I can never <laughs> do that. <laughs> well, I can only listen to um, hip hop from three artists because of that. I can only listen to uh, Joiner, Eminem, and Logic, and I listen to them. Oh no, in uh, J Cole, in J Cole, Two white rappers. In, uh, <laughs> well hey listen you can't hate on it you can't hate the talent but i listen to them and i'm like i can never do what these guys are doing ever like it, that's that's the type of content I, I like to watch and listen to things that i know i can't do in this current state because if i like if you hear other music out and i'm like what he literally like wrote that on a napkin and it doesn't it's not even coherent like I don't know. I that you know when it, it is, you know what I mean. So like, it it, it depends because so like, I at, at one point in my life like I was very like like that where like I had these like very strict rules for like music, like I especially when it came to just genres. So I was like strictly hip hop and like when it came to like techno or any other type of music. It was just one of those things where, like, nope, you know, like it's it's out of my rule book, you know. But when I yeah. when I started DJing, it kind of opened up that world to me because I had to start listening to various different genres, and in the same way, where like a person, like once you get to know them a bit more, you you there's certain qualities that make you like them. Yeah. Right. So same thing happened with music and same thing happened with like certain artists. Like it depends on, for me, it's like, it depends the vibe or the mood that I'm going for. Like for sure, there are some artists that like lyrically, they're nowhere near some of the greats, but it's catchy. And like, I might be in like a catchy music type mood. You know what I mean? So like, I'm just like, I want to bob my head and it's catchy and it's cool. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I'm like, oh, I want to listen to like something very lyrical and it's it's a passion project and it's storytelling, et cetera. So it's just a matter of like, what mood am I in? And that would dictate like, okay, I can I can tolerate this artist. <laughs> I can see that. Like I hated country music my whole life and I'm still not a fan still of it all that well. <laughs> yeah, but my wife listens to it exclusively and there's sometimes a song would come on. I'm like, that's pretty good. It's pretty the good. only country song but I like most is, uh, of the time. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, but yeah, most of the time I'm like this. I'm like this with my AirPods. I'm like, mm. <laughs> <laughs> but I wouldn't. Have, <laughs> honestly, it is the same like four topics: like dogs, girls, beer, dirt tracks, in the farm. It's like the same five things. I'm like, don't don't you want to learn something else? Um, yeah. It's like my mom goes to the same place for vacation every year. I'm like, don't you want to go maybe like 10 miles to the West? There might be something. It's a comfort zone. <laughs> it's got, yeah, well, it's what, you're, what you're used to. We hit our hour mark. Oh, um, I got to go. We got to wrap it up. 
Well, Josh, when did you a couple months ago? I don't even know if it was a couple months ago, but you were talking about the um the workout thing you were coming up with, or that, oh. you, that Chris got into. Or what? Anyway, where is that? Because I had put on some weight and I need some motivation. <laughs> Are you, are you interesting? Are you interested in a, in a challenge? Is, is yes. that weird? Challenge. Weird yes. Well, I think we I think we got it. So last time I wanted to put together like a, a, a group of 10 at least and wanted to kind of do like a, a group challenge. The only requirement was going to be that you need some sort of like <laughs> Apple Watch or fitness tracker. I would say an Apple Watch because like what's cool about an Apple Watch is that, yeah, there you go. So we can invite each other. We can keep track of what everyone's doing and making sure that everyone is on on track with like whatever their calorie goal is. So I think we could talk about that. I think we can get a, a little group together. I'm sure Chris knows some people all with Apple Watches and then we can hit like a, a certain calorie per day goal and do it for like 30 days. Do yeah. so we have to get a lumen because this is like- Chris No, no, no we don't need what Chris is doing. Look at him, <laughs> <laughs> vaping. <laughs> Let, let, hold on, I I I, I can I can uh, I can predict the answer. You're you're gonna be burning carbs. Let's no see. Way. Let's let's see what he says. I don't know. You can't you can't see his glaring, right? What does it say? You're burning carbs. <laughs> you're burning both carbs and fat. Number oh, three. Oh shit. Nice. I'm so literally losing do? weight he, as I'm well, sitting what here. What did you do differently today than the last time you blew? Well, <laughs> last time I blew, huh? Um, <laughs> well, I'm not big on blowing, Denise. But, uh, I can't tell. Week, this no. woman has changed you. <laughs> <laughs> tell you what, I didn't realize I could blow that long. So the uh, last week was day one. So I, I, I of going back into – well, I'm prepping for January 1st. So I, I was – I still had a lot of crap in me. And I honestly, I still didn't mean to really start hitting hard until January one, but doing this twice a day, it does kind of motivate you. Like, yeah, like, cause when you see that you're, not, you're just burning all, meaning you're getting fatter when you're burning all carbs, mm. no fat, you're like, I'm just not really motivated to eat anymore because I'm, you know, I know it really does work on your brain a little bit, you know, there we go. if you're, if you're consistent with it. There we go. Yeah. Okay. So we'll, we'll, we'll set up a little challenge between a few of us. And yeah, and then uh, I, I think January. Uh, let, let's hit it for for what January first, because like December we're all just gonna be you know eating, eating and like crazy, yeah. So we'll we'll do the traditional January first uh, start date and see uh, how long we last. <laughs> I know I gotta last. I gotta last. All right. Well, <laughs> I was gonna say, hold on, I'm gonna, real real quick. So we were talking last week why you were like I was getting ready to get ready. And there's a reason because I'm experienced with this. Remember about working out and stuff? Because every yeah. time I start hitting the weights hard, I always have it all mapped out. And I start hitting the weight hard. But after my first two workouts, I can't move mm. for two weeks, a week and a half. Mm -hmm. That happened. So I did a really, really hard chest day. Uh, uh, it wasn't just chest. It was others. But the second day was mostly back. Harder than I've ever worked it in probably two, three years. Sure shit. We go to Disney this weekend. And I... When you're in Disney, if you know you have small kids, you're mostly holding a kid in the heat. I have not been in so much pain in my back <laughs> in my entire life. And and you're in these tiny little Disney beds and you have all the kids cramming it. It was it was torture. But my point was I'm glad I'm starting early. Be so in January, hopefully I'll be in a point where I'm not Dying. paralyzed. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Prepping to work. I'm out. Build, I'm, I'm prepping to prepping. Listen, man, I'm 40, bro. <laughs> uh all right well we're, we're a little here. over time but that was a good show today uh ladies and gentlemen uh, i'm pretty sure everyone knows where to follow us uh we got denise chris cusimano and myself uh if you guys want to watch the video post or video podcast you can catch it on our youtube channel the josh and Kuzi show and if you want to listen in uh you can listen in on any streaming platform well, we post new episodes every tuesday early in the morning all right ladies and gentlemen that is it bye, bye. peace